Excellent. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. I am clearly not Remy, um, but I'm filling in for him uh, today. He's on vacation. So I'll be giving kind of a, an FGU on um, both uh, the Edge team and what, what they've been working on, as well as kind of the larger quality team. Um, so let's get started. I will share my screen. All right. Um, so uh, yeah, everyone can see slides. Yes. Um, so so yeah, quick quick overview. I'll go through kind of general organization around quality and and how the teams are broken up and what people are focusing on. I'm going to touch Sorry, we on. Sorry, can't see the um, slides. Oh, you can't. Okay. Uh, oh, I know what's wrong. Um, about this now looks good all right thanks guys um so uh i wonder if you could probably also see all these windows probably huh um so uh yeah so teams and quality. So we have kind of two major areas of focus uh, in the quality department. Um, there's the, the edge team that most people are familiar with uh, that's kind of uh, improving the development process, um, code-based maintenance, things like, you know, how do we separate CE and EE and, and make that clean, um, sort of more DevOps, things like that. And then um, something that's a little bit newer, which is uh, test automation and, and QA. And that's improving the quality of the product uh, with with end-to-end -end automated testing um, and while we've been trying to build out a team to, to own that and separate it out so that we can give it the attention and focus that it, that it really needs uh, obviously you know we have a small team and, and the edge guys have been um, spearheading that uh, but to that end we, we recently hired uh, Max Titri uh, to build out that team, um, hire more people to focus on test, test automation and QA and, and lead the automation of all of our end-to-end -end testing. So uh, just a quick welcome to Mech. I believe he, he was able to join us um, for this and uh, we're really excited to have him here. He has a ton of experience um, doing this uh, at other companies. Uh, he's really passionate and outspoken advocate for quality in, in the Bay Area. And we're just really excited that, that he joined GitLab. Um, so uh, uh, similarly on that note, um, the other thing that we've been focusing on uh, over the last few months, and, and many of you have probably seen it come by is uh, are the releases and improvements to our release process. Um, and, and if I was to kind of boil that down and do uh, one mission statement um, for what we're trying to improve, it's it's to avoid outages and major customer issues on GitLab.com by testing new features and bug fixes before they are deployed to production. Um, so hopefully this isn't like earth shattering to anyone. Um, this is a pretty common goal for most uh, software companies. Um, and what we're doing now to try to address that is running uh, existing automated end-to-end -end tests, uh, either manually or um, within pipelines. Uh, we take the, the kickoff document that we create kind of at the beginning of any release, and we revisit that uh, as the first RCs come out and ask the product team to, to manually validate those features at a high level or um, you know, tell us that something didn't make it or something's gonna take longer. Um, and then we, we come up with a change list of all the bugs and other improvements that have come in for any given release candidate and ask the engineering team to, to validate those changes uh, and make sure that tests were written and tests were run for them. Uh, and then most importantly, we, we test in uh, our staging environment, which let us um, test our features and, and fixes in kind of the, the way that a customer would appro approach them, but in a production-like environment that's kind of isolated from production. So we're able to, to iterate more quickly there um, without uh, subjecting customers to, to things that may be half-baked. Um, so while this has allowed us to find some issues and, and catch things before they go out to uh, the customer, um, it, it is not a scalable process um, and, and it's definitely limiting the speed and efficiency at which we're able to deploy things to production. So. 
Um, at least where we want to go next in, in the short term is uh, have our automated tests run against each merge request automatically um, and make sure that the results that are generated are uh, easy to access, easy to interpret, and, and trustable. Um, you know, if you, if you can't trust the results and you can't interpret them, then the tests are useless. Um, we want to make sure that, that new tests get written alongside features and bug fixes and that they're easy to write so that uh, the whole company and, and at least the whole engineering team can contribute to that. Um, and then ultimately what we want is, is high test coverage and reliability so that uh, we can focus on uh, letting releases be dictated by the complexity of what we're trying to develop, not the complexity of our release process and, and the tools that we're using. Um, so those are kind of the, the major things that we're trying to um, accomplish with, with this release, with these release changes over the last few months and um, where we're heading next. And uh, if, if anyone has more questions about that or wants more info on what we have planned, please, please reach out. Uh, you can also take a look at some of our OKRs, which are written um, uh, around some of these improvements. Um, and let me just kind of quickly look at chat. Oh. See if anyone has any questions. Um, all right. Well, I've completely lost this thing. All right, maybe not. Um, so, uh, moving along to accomplishments. Um, so, we're welcoming uh, one new member to the core team, uh, Jacopo. Um, we merged 74 merge requests from the community in 10.6, uh, and that's down from 90 in 10.5, but, but it's actually a, an increase in the percentage of community merge requests out of the total, um, so that, that's a great thing. Um, and uh, kind of a big shout out to the, the front end and back end teams for, for reviewing and, and merging all those are doing a fantastic job at it. Uh, also, uh, big thanks to, to Robert, uh, Luke, and Marin, um, who did a, a great job on the 10.4 release and really uh, cemented some of the best practices that, that we're still using in, in our release process. Um, and uh, there, there's a lesson in there for being too good at your job. Uh, Robert is uh, graciously accepted uh, handling the next few releases along with James um, so that Kenny has a chance to to make some longer term improvements to release tools in the release process. Um, we merged 73 uh, edge related merge requests in 10.5. Um, and there was a, a larger team that contributed to that uh, within the back end as well, um, which is great. And then uh, at least as of sort of halfway through our Q1, um, we, we actually achieved greater than 50% of our Q1 OKRs and, and less than 50% of the quarter. So, so that was a good pace for that. Um, we'll revisit those now, uh, at least when Remy gets back, and we can check in and see how we're doing towards the end of this quarter. Um, so this is a uh, kind of next few slides or overview of our OKRs. I won't read each one um, and just sort of touch on the highlights. Uh, we did earlier in the quarter complete the work to make GitLab QA production ready. Uh, GitLab QA is our automated test framework for end-to-end -end testing, um, and there's a huge team that, that contributed to a lot of aspects of that called out there. Um, so big thanks to those guys. Uh, we were able to, to contribute a few more tests to it. Um, as I mentioned, test coverage is still pretty low and, and something we want to improve on and keep an eye on in, in the quarters to come. Um, on the edge side, uh, one of our biggest undertakings this quarter is, is trying to separate out um, EE specific code from uh, the CE code base and, and try to clean that those dependencies up. Um, we kind of made about 50% progress on uh, EE files uh, and, and a little bit slower on lines of code, um, but we're, we're slowly chipping away at it and we were able to kind of start progress on a lot of these edge OKRs um, and we'll have to take a look at how we're tracking to that. Uh, for example, we're down to like 30 to 35 minutes of CE pipeline, thanks to some improvements, um, and uh, there, there's obviously room to, to go there. Um, so uh, some general heads up. Um, Mark was uh, our release manager for 10.5, which affected his uh, progress against some of his, his goals for this quarter, but should be able to turn back onto those now. Um, as I mentioned, Robert's going to be uh, part of the, the release team for the next few releases. So although that will kind of limit what he's able to do elsewhere, 
uh, hopefully it'll be a good chance to take a look at some of our release tools. Um, and then lastly, uh, this was a, an idea that Rami proposed um, and, and he created this quiz uh, that's sort of a, a way to like kind of reinforce and cement some of the, the deluge of information you get as you go through the kind of onboarding process, uh, at least within engineering. Um, and it's just kind of like a, a test your knowledge quiz on um, some of our uh, best practices and guidelines for contributing and reviewing and you know what you do when the build breaks and stuff like that. Um, and it's just kind of a fun way to, to reinforce that information. Um, there's not anything we're, we're really tracking or doing with this data. It's purely for your own sake. You can see, you can answer the questions, um, see how you did, go back and, and try it again, get some links on where to go for information. Um, we're not like, you know, selling your data or destroying democracy. It's, it's just a, a kind of a, a tool that people can use for themselves. Um, it's, uh, uh, if people find it helpful and useful, we'll, we'll definitely expand on it and maybe incorporate it into the, like the, the onboarding, um, checklist that, that people will follow, at least for engineering. Um, that's all I had. So thanks for your attention. Um, I will attempt to check, um, the chat if I can get back. There you go. I did kill that. Um, so uh, yeah, let's see if there's any questions. Doesn't look like it. Feel free to jump in though if, and grab the mic if, if you do have one. Um, and like I said, if, if anything does come up and you want some more info on what we're working on in quality, please reach out to myself, uh, go say hi to Mech, and um, yeah, have a great Tuesday guys, or whatever day it might be for you. Um, I'll give it a couple one minutes. Question. For seconds. Oh yeah, please go ahead um the uh, onboarding quiz is it like the general onboarding or release onboarding or yeah it's it's engineering uh, specific really right now it, it covers a lot of what's uh under like kind of the engineering workflow and some of the other engineering uh, onboarding docs um you know if if other teams want to kind of adopt that uh, happy to help them do it um but you know like examples of questions are like if the build breaks you know what what do you do or you know, what are the criteria for, for merge requests and things like that. So, um, yeah, it, it's engineering specific um, and, it, and it's trying to just sort of reinforce some of those best practices. Do we have a reward if somebody gets top score? <laughs> uh, my uh, wholehearted thanks and appreciation for now, um, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, Oh, so a question on chat, do the end-to-end -end tests measure performance as well? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, definitely uh, something we want. Um, and, and you get some of that, I guess, uh, for free. It, as, as you look at test results, you get to see your runtime and, and things like that. So you can at least see if how uh, long your tests are taking. Um, long term, we would definitely love to have more stress-based tests, performance-based tests that we can track and trend. Um, and then uh, specifically test the performance of GitLab.com and, and make sure that's improving. Anything else? Cool. All right, guys. Have a great day.